Acts chapter 3, verse 13. Acts 3 and 13. Say amen if you have it. All right. And if you're looking for it, say amen. amen. All good. All right. You ain't got there yet, but we'll wait on you a second. Acts 3.13, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God of our fathers, has glorified his servant, Jesus. You handed him over to be killed, and you disowned him before Pilate, though he had decided to let him go. God, we praise you tonight, and we ask that your word would be alive, made alive in our hearts, by your spirit, in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. We've been dealing with the glorified Christ in this series, and, and what we've been doing is moving, if you've been cognizant of what's been happening, we've moved in the series from the very beginning when we started it, and we began with the glorification of Jesus, starting with his pronouncement or his declaration of the crucifixion we dealt with the betrayal of Judas we dealt with the cross we dealt with the activity of Christ on the cross his sacrifice his his the nature of what he did and in everything then we moved to the uh, the resurrection And then, of course, the ascension. So in everything, he's being glorified. So it's it's a transitive uh, verb in in the Greek. And it it means he's glorified completely, but he's also glorified in successive stages. So that the glorification is revealed as it moves. You think, well, then, then, then how, in fact, if, if that's true and if we've already been through the process of it and we've dealt with the ascension and, and we got up to the end of things, then, then how can he continue to be glorified after he's already ascended? Watch, 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 watch. watch. Hmm. Peter stands before a crowd of Jews. They've all been witness of the healing of the man here at the gate beautiful. The beggar is healed. Peter says, silver and gold have I none because the man is sitting there with his hand open waiting for alms. Silver and gold have I none, but such as I have give I thee in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk and the man leaps to his feet Peter helps him up he lifts lifts uh, lifts to his feet Uh, his ankles are strengthened and he begins running walking leaping and praising God runs into the temple now I I said this before on a number of occasions I need to say it again because people are misinformed when Peter said silver and gold have I none but such as I have give I thee in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth rise up and walk he wasn't saying he didn't have any money he wasn't saying silver and gold have I none Mm. people get it twisted oh see you know the disciples they didn't have any money why all these preachers trying to be rich no when Peter said silver and gold have I none what he was saying was silver and gold I don't have to give you because what I what what you really need is not silver and gold I got silver and gold and I could give it to you but that's not going to help you Matter of fact, you've been sitting here every day getting silver and gold and you still crippled. Say, yeah, God, that's good. No, what you, what you do need that I do have to give you, I'm not authorized to give you my silver and gold, but I am authorized to give you this. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. Now, Everybody is stunned. Everybody's amazed. Everybody knows the guy at the gate beautiful. Everybody knows his story. Everybody walks walks by him every day. Oh, there he is. Here. You're obligated to give alms.
Everybody is absolutely dumbstruck. And Peter takes the opportunity then, and he's, 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 excuse me, he, he's a little ironic, and he's, he's being, he's playing with him. He goes, why does this surprise you? Why do you stare at us as if by our own power or godliness we made this man walk? No. The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God of our fathers, has glorified his servant, Jesus. Amen. Everybody say glorified. glorified. The word glorified, again, is that Greek word doxazo that we've been dealing with this. Everybody should, I hope you know it by now, D-O-X-A-Z-O, doxazo. Glorified, made much of, praised, worshipped, exalted, yes. honored. Amen. So you, what you have here now is the continual, everybody say continual, the continual glorification of Jesus. The continued and continual, continuing glorification of Jesus is directly related to the eternal purposes of God. In other words, it always was, it always is, and it always will be God's purpose to glorify his son. So the progressive revelation of glorification is seen again. Watch. He, Peter says, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God of our fathers, has glorified his servant Jesus. Say has glorified. Has, is, and will. He operated in such an extent and to such a degree that Jesus was glorified to the extent that he could be glorified in everything that he did. And he says, he has glorified, watch this, his servant, Jesus. Everybody say servant. Now, the word servant there is interesting because it's correctly translated in the NIV. The King James says his son, and the word son there is not, it's not son in the Greek. It's the word pais, P-A-I-S here. Means servant, attendant. Someone who functions in order to perform an activity or a function. Someone who gets something done. The term servant, however, you must understand tonight, is that the term servant is fully messianic. When he says, and has glorified his servant, Jesus. Servant there doesn't mean slave. It's not something that he's talking about in a derogatory way or a demeaning way. He's saying he glorified his suffering servant, his obedient servant, the one who accomplished his will. It's a messianic term, and it goes straight back to Isaiah chapter 42 in what's called the servant song. When Isaiah prophesies in Isaiah 42 when he says here is my servant whom I uphold my chosen one in whom I delight I will put my spirit on him and he will bring justice to the nations Amen. that's messianic Isaiah prophesied it 740 years prior to Peter's speech So you see the continual progressive revelation of glorification. The servant's mission then was fulfilled only, watch this, in Christ's ministry of miracles and deliverance. Because you start with his prediction, his prophetic declaration of what's going to happen and what he will do. Judas moves into the scheme of things and causes things to continue to unfold as they're supposed to. And then Jesus goes through the process of everything that goes through in the suffering and in the resurrection and the ascension and the exaltation to the right hand of the Father. But watch this. 
the miracle ministry that Jesus had on the earth while he was here. And he ministered then for three and a half years. And he performs miracle after miracle after miracle after miracle. And you see deliverance after deliverance. He was being glorified in that. Watch. Now he's there, but his glorification still continues down here because somebody just got healed by the power of his name. The Jews denied Christ as the Messiah. But their denial of Jesus' divinity did not diminish him. In fact, his divinity is continuing now to be revealed in glory. It's a continuing revelation of glory. It's a progressive in stages revelation of glory. So it is not a matter of he was fully glorified and it all came to a resounding crescendo and climax at the resurrection or at the ascension or at the exaltation. No, Peter says, no, 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 no. He has been glorified. He's continuing to be glorified. You're still going to see the glorification of Christ in the ministry of miracles, signs, and wonders. The ministry of Christ was not only experienced in the past, watch, but now it was occurring in the present. Wait a minute, he's gone, but he's still doing stuff. See, when Elvis leaves the building, the concert is over, but not in the case of Jesus. No, Jesus said, I have to go away. Yeah. Oh, God. So I can send the Holy Ghost. Yes. And he will continue to do just what I've been doing. But he does it for the purpose of revealing Jesus' glory. The miracle that they had just witnessed Everybody saw it. Everybody was privy to it. Everybody was, uh, was there, had access to it. They heard it. They saw it. They, 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 they saw the activity of Peter. They saw him approach the man. They expected him to throw a couple of dollars at his feet. And the man looks in absolute and utter horror in the fact that Peter says, I ain't giving you no money, pal. But here's what I am giving you. Now, there is suspense. Wait a minute. If you're not going to get any money, well, what's he talking to him for? What is he going to give him? Peter pulls nothing out of his pocket. Nothing up my sleeve. No. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And then the suspense continues because they wait to see what will happen. The man jumps to his feet, the man who's been crippled for all of those years. Everybody knew him. Everybody saw him. Everybody knew his story. And they're amazed. They're shocked, bewildered, befuddled. Can't make heads or tails out of it. Overwhelmed. Peter speaks in order to set things in theological construct. Watch. The miracle that they had just witnessed could not be detached from its source. In other words, the miracle didn't happen out of nowhere. Something, someone caused the miracle. Someone was responsible for the miracle. 
Mm. They knew that only God could do a miracle like that. Mm. And so that's why he says then, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob uh, has glorified his servant Jesus. What is he saying? He's saying that Jesus is the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Uh, he's saying that Jesus is eternal, that Jesus is God, that Jesus is the continuing source uh, of every miracle and every demonstration of kingdom power. So he identifies, pulls right out of the New Testament, jumps back into the Old Testament, links the two covenants together and says he was glorified, he is glorified, and he'll continue to be glorified. Miracle they had wit just witnessed could not be detached from its source. It could not be detached from its purpose. Yes. Amen. Amen. Jesus was the source yeah. and the purpose of the miracle was what? His continual glorification. We sing a song every once in a while. There's a feeling in the air that God is everywhere and his resurrection power is, watch this, is moving in this hour that Jesus might be glorified. The miraculous healing was a witness to the glorification of Jesus. It was done in the name of Jesus or the authority of Jesus. The sovereignty, the power of his name. The covenant God was showing that he approved the ongoing work of his servant and was continuing to honor him in man's presence. He's saying it didn't stop when he came and sat at my right hand and was exalted at my right hand. He's saying it's still continuing. It's still in operation. He's saying and every time you see a miracle... Jesus continues to be glorified. Every time somebody gets delivered, Jesus continues to be glorified. Every time somebody gets set free, Jesus continues to be glorified. Every time there is a revelation of my power in Jesus' name, he continues to be glorified. That's why signs and wonders are for the church today. Listen, watching me by television, don't let anybody else ever tell you that signs and wonders are gone, that they're not for today. They are the continual glorification of the living Christ. The working of miracles serves then as an emphasis upon Jesus' glorification, and it achieves its intended effect. Well, what is the intended effect of the glorification of Jesus in signs and wonders and miracles? It is the praise of his people. God said when there is the operation of the Spirit that demonstrates the authority of the risen Christ, then I expect those who see it to praise me. I expect those who benefit from it to praise me. I expect those who are recipients and witnesses and observers and participants, I expect them to praise me. My miracles are for the purpose of praise. My demonstrations of power are for the purpose of praise of my people. Everything that I do then is designed to glorify the Christ and to get a praise out of my people. Yeah. 
What is the purpose then of miracles? What's the purpose of signs and wonders? What's the purpose of phenomenon unexplained? What is the purpose of the demonstration of the power of God? What is the purpose of the revelation of the Shekinah glory in the midst of his people? What is the purpose of things that you don't understand, uh, things that you can't process, things that you can't understand or make sense out of with your finite mind? It is so that God God might be glorified because what we do we do in the name of the risen Christ in the name of Jesus the only name given to man whereby men must be saved and when those things happen it is incumbent upon the people of God to lift their voice open their mouths clap their hands unto God and give him a holy praise I'm almost done. Got one more thing I need to say. Listen. When we experience the supernatural power of the ministry of Christ by the Holy Ghost, and let me just say, I am glad and I am proud. And I am not ashamed that in this church, the supernatural ministry of the power of the Holy Ghost is made manifest in our midst. The majority of churches in America have thrown the baby out with the bath water and you couldn't buy a miracle. But in this house, I said in this house, I said in this house, we experience the supernatural power of the ministry of Christ by the Holy Ghost. And when we do, and we do all the time, it's not one of them churches, well, back in 1947, a lady got healed of a cold. Brother Billy had a bunion and God healed him in 53. No. When we do experience that supernatural power, listen. The most important thing. I say the most important thing. Is not the miracle. Hear it. Or its participants. Or the one God may have used in the process. Mm. But the most important thing is the expression of praise and glory that we give that belongs to the glorified Christ. Making us continued witnesses of his continuing glory. Now stand to your feet and give him a praise. Come on, stand to your feet and praise him like you know he's worthy. Stand to your feet and give him honor and glory. Magnify him in this house. He's worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy. He's what? Come on, I said he's worthy in here. Anybody know he's worthy? If he's worthy, go ahead and praise him for 60 seconds. Come on, 60 seconds of glorifying praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory. God, we thank you for your presence and for your power. We thank you for your word. 
We thank you tonight. Because you have been here with us. Now continue to go with your people, we pray. In Jesus' name. Amen. And amen.